Russian sovereign territory is once again under attack after Ukrainian forces launched an ambitious operation across the state border in Kursk Oblast in large numbers on August 6. This time, the attack is led not primarily by small units of pro-Ukraine Russian nationals and other assorted foreign formations, like in the numerous incursions conducted over 2023 and early 2024. As of the second day of the incursion, a mix of sources, including the Russian Defense Ministry itself, have reported a larger offensive involving a Ukrainian force likely numbering hundreds of troops and dozens of vehicles strong. The attack comes at a tumultuous stage in the war. As hundreds of kilometers to the south, Ukrainian forces continue a desperate defense against relentless Russian attacks on multiple sectors of the front line in Donetsk Oblast. While previous incursions focused on other sectors of the border, this push is centered on the area around Sudja, a small town in Kursk Oblast with a population of just over 6,000 that lies around 10 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. As of the early hours of August 8, very little independently verifiable information is available on the specifics of which settlements in the area are currently under the control of Ukrainian forces as fighting continues. Kyiv has so far refrained from official announcements on the offensive, with President Volodymyr Zelensky simply saying in an evening address that he had spoken to his commander-in-chief Oleksandr Sirsky, and that details would follow later. Requests for comments sent by the Kyiv Independent to Ukraine's military intelligence agency and the general staff of the armed forces have so far been declined or left unanswered amid a countrywide policy of silence. Visibly frustrated in a short public address, after an emergency meeting with top security officials on the afternoon of August 7, Russian President Vladimir Putin called the offensive a large-scale provocation, further accusing Ukrainian forces of shelling residential areas in the region. A few hours later, Valery Gerasimov, Russia's chief of the general staff and overall commander of the war against Ukraine, said that Kyiv's attempts to push deep into Kursk Oblast were stopped and that the operation will end with the rout of the enemy and the return to the state border. Information from the ground is largely limited to drone footage and anecdotal reports circulated mostly by Russian telegram channels run by semi-independent commentators often known as mill bloggers. These channels, while fervent supporters of Russia's war, are known for posting news often diverging from the official Kremlin line. Kursk Oblast is one of three Russian regions, along with Belgorod and Bryansk Oblasts, bordering Ukrainian territory under the control of Kyiv's forces. The region lies directly across from Ukraine's northeastern Sumy Oblast, from where the Ukrainian incursion was launched. The attack comes at a tumultuous stage in the war, as hundreds of kilometers to the south, overstretched Ukrainian brigades continue a desperate defense against relentless Russian attacks on multiple sectors of the front line in Donetsk Oblast. This, combined with the little tangible gains of Ukraine's previous raids into Russia, has raised questions about whether the resources committed and potential losses suffered by Kyiv in the incursion will ultimately be justified by its possible strategic achievements. Additional Russian evidence of serious electronic warfare preparation by Ukrainian forces before the incursion in Kirks, which completely suppressed communications within the Russian troops. The enemy prepared extremely carefully for the invasion, they discovered the main frequencies of our border radio communication networks, UAV control frequencies, and prepared powerful jammers that crushed our communications and seriously cut down the work of the Lancet-type UAVs. Unfortunately, the Russian command behaved sluggishly in this direction, regarding it as secondary and supplying it on a residual basis. All resources were directed to the fighting factions on the other side of the border, and this led to a sharp contrast in the saturation of weapons, equipment, communication systems, electronic warfare of the border cover zone and the warring factions, which the enemy took advantage of. Russian reinforcements staging in Kursk region. 
Ukrainians are quickly moving forward and then setting up infantry and drone ambushes on any Russian reinforcements. One Russian witness said they just rose out of the cornfields. A drone strike on a Russian train carrying supplies for Russian troops. Great work by Ronany Drone Unit of the 65th Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. A moving train is a challenging target, but it's worth the extra work as trains carry thousands of tons of cargo, so such strikes cause disruptions to Russian military logistics. FBI investigators searched the house of former U.S. intelligence officer and current Russia Today columnist Scott Ritter in Delmar, New York, as part of a federal investigation. It was reported by local News Channel 13. FBI spokeswoman Sarah Ruin confirmed that FBI officers were searching the house but did not go into details. Scott Ritter traveled to the temporarily occupied territories and published materials intended to discredit Ukraine and our allies. During this trip, he was accompanied by officers of the Russian Secret Services. On 18th January, the National Resistance Center reported that American Scott Ritter, a former UN weapons inspector in Iraq, who was convicted in 2011 for pedophilia and five other charges and released on parole after 2.5 years in prison, visited the temporarily occupied territories of Kherson region. Ritter previously traveled to Chechnya, where Ramzan Kadyrov allegedly gave Ritter a list of Ukrainian prisoners captured by Russian occupiers in Donetsk and Luhansk regions to exchange for sanctions relief. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.